So first of all, thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, I think events like that are uh, extremely, it are excellent to happen. And I think we need even more because surprisingly, not uh, many politicians are involved and not many of us know exactly uh, the options and the possibilities that them health provides. So uh, we, we do have, of course, um, a lot of uh, action plans uh, uh, happening at the moment. So I think uh, it's important, first of all, to say a few numbers because in politics, if you have the numbers and you understand the, the econ economics of, uh, and the possibilities of each issue, then it's more easy for us to make decisions and uh, the more right decisions. So we do face uh, common health problems and we have um, an aging society and population in uh, the European Union. So basically, we have an increase of chronic diseases also that we have to uh, address. We have 85% of deaths, uh, um, it's because of chronic diseases. And this costs basically to our systems uh, five, uh, seven, 700 billion euros per year. Um, the new situation, it uh, takes uh, a completely new uh, definition of a healthcare system. And to do that, we always try to have a more, more innovative solutions and answers. So we do believe that it can be the key, not just to improve our quality of lives, but also uh, in economic terms. So while the mobile health market is uh, evolving and uh, growing rapidly, because there is, of course, demand, that's why it's growing, um, we do have a first action plan that was designed in 2004. It was mostly focused on the electronic prescriptions and computerized health records. In 2012, so like uh, eight years later, two months later, after a public consultation, the Commission adopted a second plan for 2012-2020. This followed the adoption of the directive on patients' right to cross-border healthcare, which is extremely important. But Addressing this issue is not enough, just having this action plan, because it has so many different aspects and dimensions and problems that we had to solve. Um, so it, it's finalized as an action plan in se with several uh, reports, um, and it has passed, of course, the European Parliament. Uh, but in April 2014, DigiConnect released a, a new paper, the Green Paper, on mobile health and launched a public consultation. It has to do with privacy, because these are the issues that come up now. It's patient safety and the necessity of a clear legal framework. So maybe we decide that we have a common threat uh, in health issues, common health issues, but still we don't exchange information. We are scared of exchanging uh, uh, patients' data. And also we have to make sure that uh, everything is uh, protected. So now the Commission is discussing potentially uh, policy actions uh, with uh, the stakeholders. And one problem that we face is, of course, that the doctors and the physicians, they are still not very keen on the new technologies. They don't use it. Why? Because they have not been trained properly to, to use them and trust them. So um, they, they kind of resist to new technologies. But we also have patients that because they trust their doctors, they also are not uh, using basically the new technologies. So we have, um, I think the number was like 10% of the applications around health that are actually being used by patients while we have so much more. Um, and also they're afraid of their security and their personal data. So uh, what we have to do, of course, is try to, to convince and try to, to create um, a safety net for the doctors, but also for the patients to use these applications and proving them. Also, as I said, with these events, we also hold many events in the parliament with the stakeholders to understand that exchanging data or help, it, it, it's helping themselves, but also other patients uh, with the results that they can take. They can make very important conclusions about, um, about the progress of the disease and the progress of the cure. And, um, and this comes to another report that is about to come, the free data flow. So it's a report that we're about to discuss uh, in the European Parliament. It has to do with um, ensuring that uh, safety is, is, uh, is taken care of for the patients, but without stopping innovation. 
So it's not very easy because the balance, you know, it's very thin. Uh, I'm also working on the geo-blocking report. So, for example, you have the access to a specific site or a specific application from one country, but you cannot have it from another country inside the European Union. So basically, we try to lift the barriers and to take down the, the, all, all the barriers, I would say, uh, more properly. Another problem is the reimbursement. So if you make an application, if you work in new technologies, it's more difficult to, to get back the money that you've spent there. And also, if a doctor wants to provide remote care via the internet, it's not uh, reimbursed also. So we have not... We're not ready for that, but we do try to, to get answers. Um, um, the, com the Commission's plan is acknowledging the problems, uh, also about the lifestyle apps, the well-being applications and the medical devices, underlining the contribution. So, for example, a medical device or, or an Apple Watch or wearable device can provide with significant data for the patients, so it has to be reimbursed. We have to make it more easy for the patients to, to use it. Um, we have an application, for example, I don't know if you know, that they can detect if, you're, if you have the early stages of Parkinson's disease or they could even see if your blood pressure changes or if a heart attack could, uh, could be a threat to your health. So we have uh, excellent scientists and uh, we have, of course, uh, very innovative ideas on that. So we have to follow up with the legislation framework to make it easier and more accessible for uh, all the member states. And then, as I said, the data that you can get from that can help you improve and also recognize where a disease, maybe so sometimes in artificial intelligence, they can see if a chronic disease or if, um, if something is happening in a specific place in Europe, so they can identify the geography of the disease, and then they can see if they can address it there, they can understand uh, the origin of the problem. So uh, one of the main issues for us now is uh, to, to reassure them of the privacy and security, safety and transparency, uh, and also to give access to uh, web entrepreneurs. Um, so I, I don't want to bother you with more uh, details. I can answer questions later. I would say that also we're trying to work on some kind of validation. So to have applications that they're not just anybody, but being validated and having a, a certificate that they're actually um, working and they're actually safe to use. So uh, this would also, I think, make patients feel um, more reassured of their safety to use them. Um, we have some examples in the in Europe, Estonia, for example, they have an e-health card, which is um, really helpful because one of other, the other problems that we have is we speak different languages. So if you have your own card and then you have all your prescriptions or um, all the medical record of your health with you, it's more easy to be taken care of in another member state without having to explain in a different language what has already happened to you if something happens. So I think um, we have to work clo closer together to get things done more fast. Um, so liability rules, licensing schemes, and informed consent will become increasingly in important uh, to us, but I think... Uh, uh, it's it's going to become a, a greater part of mainstream healthcare. So um, on the electronic health records also, I just want to uh, say that uh, they are real-time, they are patient-centered records that provide immediate and secure information to authorized uh, users. So um, it would contain the history that I, uh, I mentioned, and it would say basically diagnosis and treatment, medication, allergies... Uh, as well as radiology images and laboratory results, and they can expand uh, to you know to to ma to take it from a traditional paper to actually have it digitally with you. So this uh, this system that the electronic health records would play a vital role in having a universal health coverage by supporting diagnosis and treatment of patients through provision of rapid, comprehensive, and timely patient information at the point of care. Um, another uh, program that I think you know of, it's Horizon 2020, it's the Internet of Things, where devices, based Internet of Things, it's Internet of Things for people, where things, devices, 
connect and they exchange data between them and they provide us with what we should know. Um, so we, we are heavily funding a new uh, innovation through this uh, program for uh, healthy aging, but uh, also more specific for specific diseases. I would say it's too technical for me to tell you, but uh, uh, I think you follow the funding that comes up every now and then. And it's really important because we do try also to have um, applications that are will be from the beginning easy and accessible for uh, all the European citizens in all member states. I can also just mention that um, along with uh, other colleagues, in the European Parliament, we drafted and written the declaration on electronic health records. So we asked the Council to, to study the possibility of creating uh, a mature and interoperable environment for electronic uh, health records across the Union and respecting uh, privacy and data protection. It might seem interesting, but yes, it just happens now. So we haven't uh, had much progress on that, but we do have we, ma we managed to collect 90 signatures, which is, I think, a big amount of uh, you know, maps signing and understanding also the problem. Um, so I think I don't need to, to talk further than that. I can just tell you that we have a lot of reports coming, trying to protect uh, citizens and make them feel more safe. So we're going to have also the privacy code of contact for health applications. We have 5G, so this means we can have huge amounts of data um, and without losing any time. So we could have telemedicine coming up and we can have online examination. Uh, I think uh, there's a lot to be seen in the near future and we really have to, um, to be closer to you and understand the progress of science to be able to legislate properly and not over-regulate uh, to allow innovation uh, uh, help a lot uh, the quality of our lives. I think this is the main point that I would like to make uh, from uh, the part of the European Parliament.